There I am, leaning up against the wall. I'm naked. I'm, I'm trying to be sexy. In front of me, my friend points her camera at me. I'm feeling really awkward, frozen, like a deer in headlights. The reason why I was doing this was for, for my husband. I wanted to do a sexy photo book, but I was starting to regret my idea. In the closet, I get a boa and I throw it around my neck to hide. The feathers egg on my inner diva, and soon I'm playing, feeling sultry and sassy, silly and sweet. Seeing the photos surprised me. In them, I discover facets of myself I've forgotten about or dismissed. And as it turned out, the photo book was really for me. Later, I photograph my friend. We laugh a lot. We agree that this is such a liberating experience, something every woman should do for herself. And this was the beginning of my photographic journey with a thousand more or less naked women, and a few brave men. I'm here today as a writer and a photographer, and I want to talk about the therapeutic potential of photography and the power of our gaze, how the way we see can limit or liberate ourselves and each other. Friends came, and soon strangers in 2004, I opened my studio. I called it Lolo's Boudoir. <laughs> I filled it with vintage props and furnitures and fabrics. This was to be a playground for women to dress up and undress and re-enchant our lives. Today, I'm actually speaking to the female experience, but I want to say to all of you here that the journey of liberation is, is really for all of us. So, who were these women? They were shy and soft and racy and rebellious women. They were CEOs and social workers and students. They were mothers and married and single. They were women with rolls, cellulite, scars. Women navigating cancer, abuse, heartbreak. Women unsure how to be sensual or feminine. Women blossoming even at 95. Women of all shapes and sizes have come to be photographed on their own dime and desire. The photos were for private, not for social media, not for TEDx, for that matter. <laughs> but here we are. Woman by woman, I became really good at uh, capturing an attractive appearance. Over time, though, our focus on sexiness started to feel like a shallow and limiting view. And I had to dig into my own female identity. I grew up in a traditional patriarchal family in the 70s during the women's liberation movement. And uh, as a kid, I watched the predominant power structure between men and women. And uh, I must have decided that I was going to be free. Except my idea of liberation was tied to equality. I wanted to prove myself equal to the boys, to the men. Not through my looks, through my intellect, my skills, my sexual freedom. I was really proud of my independence. It took me years to understand that I'd actually pursued my worth and my value and my sense of freedom of, on men's terms rather than my own. So at the studio, I began to question how could we women um, express ourselves on our own terms and see ourselves? Let me give you a few examples. 
There is this young woman who comes, her mother calls her fat, her husband of one year calls her ugly. He wants a divorce. She lifts her shirt to show me, and there is her belly. It's soft and tender, not fat. Instinctually, I say, let's start here. At first, she looks like a beaten dog through the camera, but as we play and experiment with different ideas and poses and places, she moves through the hurt and the anger and the laughter, and at the end, the belly has been forgotten. And I capture this of her walking into her new life. At least how, that's how it seemed to me. The photo came to symbolize self-love to her, to me, perhaps a return to innocence. So, most of the women came to get a new sense of themselves and a, a new relationship to their bodies and sexuality. I found that by directing less and allowing for more space, even for awkward moments where we had no idea what to do next, uh, the women would start to come to their own revelations and expressions. I also found that by addressing the wound straight on, like the woman with the belly and her low self-esteem, that the energy and the feeling could shift, and therefore also her, the story she tells herself about it. Another example. A woman comes, she's around 50, she's going through a life transition. She says, my, um, my life has become a prison. I feel like I've lost my voice, my joy. I've become invisible even to myself. She wants to create a storybook of where she's been and where she's going. I look for visual metaphors to help illustrate her inner feelings and emotions, like this or this. The photos become evidence of her transformation. By creating lots of different photographs, she gets to see many sides of herself. And by creating, creating more poetic portraits, she gets to begin to see and sense herself beyond just appearance. Nudity have become a really interesting metaphor for honesty. It's not that nudity is required, it's an invitation. But with less stuff to hide inside, the women can automatically become more present and available. And um, with working with the body movement and the language of the body more directly, it's easier for me to guide the women back in touch with their inner sensation of intimacy, aliveness, strength, beauty, joy, love, fury. Um, and when she can feel herself, I can feel her, and then I can capture more embodied expressions. And this is where beauty lies and blooms. It's not necessarily pretty, but it's honest, it's alive, it's mysterious, sometimes ferocious. This is how I'd like to be seen. And I think this is how we all would like to be seen in our human light, in our human shadow. Oops. <laughs> this was the moment I dreaded the most. Oh, the slides are going to go crazy. <laughs> so. What does a thousand naked women amount to? Aside from a lot of photographs, it adds up to a grim reality and uh, a beautiful vista. Let's look at the grim reality first. The majority of these relatively privileged women have all feel, felt shame and struggle with their body and sexuality. Where have we lost sight and sense of ourselves? It's a long story, as you may know, 
But for instance, for the past 150 years alone, with the invention of photography, women have mostly been photographed by men, for men. The female body and sexuality is rarely seen as her own. If it's not used to sell something or gain something, it's shamed and commented on, on from all fronts. Just take a look at social media. Once the female body was revered for its um, fertility and mystery, today it's become a battlefield where men and women, fashion and media, religion and commerce fight for power and money. In my work, I've seen this, that the battlefield has moved inside women's psyches and bodies. We've become so used to subjugating ourselves to the predominant cultural view on women that including the male gaze and including the, the female competitive glances that we barely notice. Now, the beautiful view. This work has taught me to see with my heart and capture moments of acceptance. The women have gift, gifted me with uh, with views of their inner lives and their souls. It's been an honor to see them and help them see themselves and help them reclaim their bodies. From being a seducer, I have become a witness. The women might have come for beauty, but what they really needed was to be witnessed, not by harsh and hungry eyes, but by gentle eyes, genuinely interested in the person inside. They wanted, if only for a moment, to exist without judgment. By us coming together with openness and curiosity, we have been able to empower each other and exchange the female competition with solidarity. When we come together like this, it's not momentarily losing your inhibition that leads to your self-love or acceptance or a sense of wholeness. It's when you find the courage and the freedom to reveal yourself to another. And this is how intimate photography encounters can offer healing, transformation and celebration. Dear friends, with and without the camera, I do believe there is an art to seeing and being seen. Because our gaze is never without power, it's never neutral. It's informed by our experiences and conditioning, our biases and our beliefs, our preferences and agendas, and also how we feel and about and see ourselves. In many ways, we're blind. We don't see each other fully and freely. But what happens when we surrender this need? What happens when we stop judging? We become present, available for the discovery. Look around you. Yeah, you can look around you. I know you can't see, but... Does your gaze limit or liberate? <laughs>